$6.1 billion and the 47th wealthiest family in America has leveraged their wealth to gain influence with elected officials, as well as to retain high priced attorneys to shell them from their wrongful behavior in connection with Kathy's disappearance and I would imagine other uh, serious wrongdoing as well. When we became involved in this case several years ago, we soon discovered that the allegation by the Sturst insider was correct. However, she only addressed the first cover-up, not the second one, the cover-up of the cover-up. The first cover-up was a cover-up that Robert Durst killed Kathy. And when I say killed Kathy, to be unequivocally clear, as the Los Angeles District Attorney knows and said in a recent motion, and as the Westchester District Attorney should know, he murdered her and it was a premeditated murder. There was absolutely no question about it. But yet a game has been played, uh, which we'll go into at a later date as to why that cover-up of Kathy's murder by Robert Durst has taken place. But the second cover-up is comprised of the attempt of the Durst family to cover up their involvement in the cover-up of Robert's murder of Kathy. The second cover-up and the influence the Durst family has over prosecutors in connection with the Berman murder trial was inadvertently confirmed by Los Angeles District Deputy District Attorney John Lewin in a motion to admit that was submitted to the Berman Court on April 2nd, 2021, a motion that appears to have been submitted at the request of representatives of Douglas Durst and the Durst organization. And I wanna be really clear, this motion sort of went unnoticed except for people in the courtroom that day, but when we got a copy of the motion papers, it really made it clear to us how much power the Durst organization and family have over the Los Angeles District Attorney in connection with the Berman trial. In the motion, Los Angeles Deputy District Attorney Lewin falsely stated that Robert Durst intentionally murdered Kathy because she told Douglas that Robert was committing financial crimes as a Durst family member and executive of the Durst organization. The only thing that Lewin said that was true in that statement was that Durst intentionally murdered Kathy, but the reason he gave as to why he mentioned he murdered Kathy was entirely false, and Lewin knows it was false. Lewin further stated that Douglas has admitted that he, his father, Seymour, who passed away in 1995, his sister Wendy Durst Krieger, and Tom Durst knew that during the eight year period from 1974 to 1982, Robert, as a Durst family executive, had committed multiple financial crimes and stole between $200,000 and a million dollars. 1982. Now, I know you all agree with me that in 1982, that is a lot of money. According to Lewin, Douglas Durst will testify that he and his father asked Robert to stop committing these crimes, but he would just not listen. In other words, they want you to believe that Father Seymour, Brother Douglas, and all the other powerful Durst allow Robert to continue to remain as a Durst family executive, even though they knew he was continually committing these financial crimes. Think about that. You think Seymour, that big powerful Seymour, a big powerful Douglas Durst said, Robert, please just stop doing these crimes. It's not good for the family, stop. In 1974, and then 1975, Robert, another crime, you gotta stop. Robert says, it's in the motion, I'm gonna do it no matter what. So they let him do it. Happened again in 76, 77, 78, 79, 80, 81. And then of course, we all know that he killed Kathy on January 31st, 1982. Big powerful people in a big business who have a responsibility to several uh, individuals and have millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars at issue and a whole bunch of tax consequences and everything know that when the top executive or one of the top executives in their company is stealing money that there are many potential criminal crimes that are being committed. Deputy District Attorney Lewin intentionally misrepresents or omits key information in an attempt to exonerate Douglas Durst and other family members from other wrongdoing. In other words, the best thing I could say for Deputy District Attorney Lewin and Los Angeles District Attorney's Office, they cut a deal with Douglas Durst and said, listen, we'll absolve you of any of the wrongdoing that you may have been involved in if you just help us put Robert Durst uh, away. Now, the sad part about it is they didn't need Douglas Durst's testimony 
to put Robert Durst away, especially in California, where they're trying Durst for Susan Berman's murder, not for Kathy Durst's murder. Prior to deciding, prior to our deciding to have this press conference, I urged Deputy District Attorney Lewin to withdraw the motion and correct the inaccuracies and omissions in his motion. He refused to do it. Then we communicated and sent an email to District Attorney uh, Gascon, the Los Angeles District Attorney, and he ignored our email. And we told them that if they don't withdraw it, we would basically do exactly what we're doing today, which is to go public. Since the District Attorney refused to correct the record, we decided that we would provide some examples of Mr. Lewin's disingenuous and unethical behavior. First and foremost, the Deputy District Attorney does not mention that the, from the time that Kathy disappeared almost 40 years ago, Douglas Durst, his father Seymour, who died in 1995, his siblings, Tom and Wendy, all refused to cooperate with New York investigators. Question I have for all of you. Why did Douglas Durst decide after almost four decades to cooperate with Los Angeles investigators, but has never cooperated with the investigators in New York? Not the NYPD, not the Westchester County District Attorney's Office, not the New York County District Attorney's Office. You think that maybe he was concerned because if the investigation took place in New York, which is now being conducted by the Westchester District Attorney, they would ask these questions. Hey, why didn't you cooperate? Why did you withhold this information? Why did you do some really terrible things, which now I'm gonna talk about some of the other terrible things that Douglas Durst did. Lewin doesn't mention that in a preemptive interview with the New York Times on January 1st, 2015, Douglas Durst claimed that he told former Westchester County District Attorney Janine Perro that if I had any way of getting my brother, Robert, behind bars, I would do everything I could, but there was nothing I could do, said big powerful Douglas. Well, let me ask you this question. Douglas knew about Robert's financial crimes as early as 1974. That's what he told Lewin. That's what's in Lewin's motion. Why did he wait almost half a century to disclose these crimes? What type of person remains quiet when their sister-in-law is brutally murdered? Lewin does not mention that Douglas and his father before him retained criminal defense lawyers for Robert and the family to lawyer them up and shield them from potential criminal liability. To state the obvious, why would the Durst family lawyer up and refuse to cooperate with investigators if they had nothing to hide? Lewin doesn't mention in his motion that on Wednesday, February 3rd, 1982, three days after Kathy disappeared and two days before Robert reported her missing to the police, Robert's siblings and cousins knew that Kathy was missing. Why did they wait? Why did they wait? I urge you to read um, an interview between former Westchester Assistant District Attorney Kevin Hines and our radio interviewer, I believe, um, what are their names, guys? Bennington. Bennington. A Bennington interview with Kevin Hines in 2015 and see what he had to say about what happened on February 3rd. I also urge you, and you can get this on audio, uh, from the Berman trial, one of the first witnesses in the Berman trial before it was interrupted by COVID was Thomas Durst. And go listen to the part when Thomas Durst is about to tell the world about what happened at that Wednesday meeting, but he was stopped by John Lewin. I also ask you to inquire of Tom why he stood by and did nothing. Check this out. When you listen to that testimony, you're going to see, and you're going to listen to Tom Durst, and he's going to tell you that at the end of December of 1981, he met with Kathy. Kathy told him how she was afraid of Bob. Kathy told him that she was looking for a divorce. Kathy told him how desperate she was for money. And Tom knew then that Kathy feared for her life. And what does Tom do? Like a Durst does, he did nothing. He sat by and watched. Uh, as uh, after and watch him participate in the cover up of Kathy's murder because he just like his brother Douglas, big coward. Even more importantly, ask John Lewin about the deal that he made with Douglas Durst's testimony. Like, what was what was the deal for? It was just more than Douglas just giving testimony. A guy like Douglas Durst, he doesn't want to just basically uh, control what's going on, but he makes demands. He makes demands on a prosecutor. And what Douglas Durst basically did is said, 
I'll give you some information. I'll tell you that on Tuesday, February 2nd, uh, when Robert Durst said that he was in Connecticut on a Durst real estate deal, he was really in the New Jersey Pinelands dumping Kathy's body parts. So Douglas is going to basically tell you that now, except somebody should tell Lewin that we already knew that Robert Durst lied about his whereabouts. We didn't need that testimony. Not even a little, not even a little. But what Douglas said is, for my testimony, which is unnecessary in the first place in the Susan Berman trial, I'll cooperate as long as New York stands down, and they did, and Westchester prior to Janine Perro, uh, prior to Mimi Roca, agreed to stand down while Los Angeles did their trial. The NYPD claims that they're doing missing person investigation of Kathy, even though everybody knows that she's dead, because we don't believe they actually are. But anyway, at the end of the day, one of the things that um, Douglas traded for was that his sister Wendy would not be a witness in the Los Angeles trial. Now, understand something about sister Wendy. Sister Wendy was the one who told Tom Durst initially about the meeting on February 3rd, Wednesday, February 3rd, 1982, two days before Kathy was reported missing. Wendy's also the person who initially contacted Robert Durst when the Westchester District Attorney reopened the investigation in 1999-2000. Wendy has a lot to say, and it's about time that somebody takes Wendy in front of a grand jury, puts her under oath, and forces her to tell what she knows. Because one of these Durst are going to eventually tell the truth, whether it's Wendy, whether it's probably never Douglas, but maybe Tom. One of them is going to ultimately tell the truth. If not, their spouses will, or their children will, or the next generation will, because they will do, ultimately, somebody in that Durst bloodline will figure out that they need to tell the truth. So what Lewin doesn't mention in his, his papers is also, he doesn't talk about why Douglas Durst uh, not only didn't come forward, but here's another interesting thing. In the motion that Lewin wrote, he claims that Kathy came to Douglas also 30 days before she was murdered. So approximately 30 days before she was murdered, just like Tom met with Kathy, approximately 30 days before she was murdered. And Douglas claims that uh, Kathy came to him and basically said, listen, I'm gonna, I want to report to you that Robert's committing all these crimes. Douglas, even in the motion, admits that they already knew about these crimes. But then Douglas says this absurd thing that he tells Robert about the crimes and then Robert Durst gets angry. And that's why Lewin has now alleged that that was the motive for the murder. Now, most importantly, what you have to understand, the motive for the murder, there were multiple motives why Robert Durst wanted Kathy dead. But Kathy wasn't going to report these financial crimes that Robert, Robert was making to the family. Kathy had already gone outside and was threatening to report them to the IRS and other, other individuals, but not to just say that Robert was involved, but to say that the Durst organization was involved. Now, remember, if Robert Durst, at that time, he was an executive in the Durst organization, just like Douglas was, and just like several, his father and other, his uncles and other cousins, they were executives. So once Robert is an executive is committing these crimes over and over and over again, it's really very difficult to argue that the Durst family, other executives, were not complicit in those crimes, given the fact that they knew about it and they did nothing to stop it. But I want to go back to this issue about 30 days. So now we have Douglas and Thomas Durst, two of Robert's brothers, who knew that Kathy was in danger. In fact, if you read the New York Times article, Douglas Durst proudly tells about the fact that he used to keep a weapon or uh, some kind of uh, tool or whatever, a weapon on his desk at work at Durst organization because he was afraid that Robert Durst was going to come in and attack him. So what Douglas Durst was proudly said, I had it just in case. He knew his brother was violent. He knew that after he told him, at least he says he told him, that Kathy was reporting these crimes, he knew that Robert was angry. What does he do? He does what a Durst does. He did nothing. He did nothing. He knew that his violent brother was going to take his anger out on Kathy, and it could not possibly have been a surprise to him that Robert murdered Kathy. I just want to take a second, by the way, before I, I finish. I just have a couple more minutes. Uh, you notice that my clients are not with me today, my clients being the siblings of Kathy. 
And you notice that I have, you won't see them on camera, but I have attorneys here and who work with us. And we have investigators and other people who've worked on this case. We've uncovered a tremendous amount and we share that information with the proper authorities. But I do wanna say this, my clients are not here because after 40 years, they are still afraid that Robert Durst or somebody else in the Durst over is gonna hurt them or their family members. They are scared, they are frightened, they've been harassed, they've been beaten up by this big Durst empire, this Durst dynasty. They think because they have money, they could do whatever they want, but what they're gonna learn, and they should have already learned, is that they can. I don't believe for a second that they can buy the uh, Mimi Roca, the Westchester District Attorney, or other people as, uh, who work in that office, as they may have been able to do in other situations with other people. But clearly, in this particular situation, they're done. They're done. Lewin doesn't mention his motion that at the time that Kathy was murdered, both Robert and Douglas were almost 40 years of age. They weren't little boys. They weren't little men. Uh, they, were, they were almost middle-aged men. They knew exactly what was going on. They were intricately involved in what was going on in the business. Lewis doesn't mention that Douglas Durst is a serial liar, just like his, his brother, Robert. Uh, and it's, a, it's sort of interesting because what we did is, and I have, uh, you know, uh, just the attorney, I'm not going to name, but these attorneys that I work with work really hard. So we have a bunch of documents which basically show how Douglas Durst died. So, for example, there's a document where Douglas Durst attorneys talk about the fact that Robert Durst you know, basically had a menial job, never really collected rents for the Durst organization, specifically say did not collect rents. But we know that in this motion with Lewin, they're saying that Robert Durst collected rents and then took those rents from the Durst organization and put them into dummy corporation. What is it, Douglas? Which one is it? How can we tell if you're telling the truth? Very difficult. I also want to say that there are a lot of witnesses we gave to the Westchester District Attorney over the names of over 100 witnesses. And some of those witnesses are testifying in the Berman trial, some are not. Uh, some that did testify already, Marion Waddington, Peter Schwartz, uh, Anna Doyle. Those are just a few that have publicly testified and support the kinds of allegations that we're making. I'm not mentioning the other names right now because, again, people are very much uh, afraid of the fact of the, they're afraid of the Durst organization. One potential witness who's afraid, but um, I think will now cooperate with the Westchester District Attorney is somebody who's going to be able to talk about a meeting that Kathy Durst had with Seymour Durst just uh, within the year before she was murdered to discuss her concerns about Robert's crimes and behavior. But we don't really need that anymore because in this motion, the Durst family's already admitted that they knew what was going on. Something that you should all think about is that there was a fiduciary uh, obligation that the Durst organization had uh, to deal with these crimes that uh, Robert was committing, and we'll deal with that at another time. In the motion, and again, I don't want to keep you guys much longer, just to say in the motion, they outline Douglas Durst does these intricate crimes that Robert Durst was doing. I ask you to read that because what's the likelihood that Robert Durst could have been acting alone and committing all these crimes and stealing all this money? You know what? I'm sort of... Uh, running out of time here and there's so much to do. And quite frankly, I'd rather be spending my time meeting with investigators for the Westchester District Attorney's Office and other individuals who can help get justice for Kathy. So let me ask you this. After Robert murdered Kathy, along with their father and sister, Douglas and Tom lawyered up, closed ranks and helped Robert cover up Kathy's murder. So you may wonder why all of a sudden, after decades, 40 years, did Douglas decide to share this information with Los Angeles prosecutors? The answer is simple. However, out of respect to the ongoing investigation of the Westchester District Attorney, 
I will not discuss Douglas's motivation at this time other than to say, follow the money. In closing, we thank you for your commitment to helping us seek justice for Kathy. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me and I'll do my best to get back to you. And again, wish you all a good day and we thank you very much for your consideration and time.